Greetings, this is Petro. Hey Petro, welcome. Nice to meet you. You are a fascinating historical figure. Really? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You changed, changed Russia, in, I guess. It was a necessity to change at that time, uh, trading and these things were needed. Uh-huh. Um, how was it in Europe when you visited Europe? How do you, did you feel about it? It felt like they were closer together communication-wise. Uh -huh. We were farther away. We had little communication that was as strong and as valid as they were doing with one another. And so this is why I, I understood the need for um, greater trade and understanding and better communications. This right. communication portion was essential in the success. Uh -huh. I uh, saw also that the people were responded to certain things and our people did not respond similarly but that they probably could if I put the right stimulation in front of them. All right. Uh huh. And so I see that in Europe, they are reacting to social things, whereas in Russia, they not find social things important. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so. I want to bring more society, social things to Russia, right. for people to be closer together, and for government to have more control of activity of people so we know what they are doing and have finger on pulse of what is interest for people. Right. That's what you did. Uh-huh. Yeah. So did you... Uh, did you actually feel like an alien uh, when you were uh, on Earth, or did you feel like a, an Earth being? I did feel disconnected from the way that humanity works because they were so only interested in small visions. Mm hmm and I was interested in much bigger visions. I did not understand this small thought process. Right, but yes, did you I, realize? I did not feel human, you are correct. But you didn't realize you were an alien, right? Well, not at first. I think that later in life, as I got a little older, it became obvious that people looked at me as an alien because of my size. Right. But you and didn't... I said to them, how do you know that aliens are this big? Maybe they're very tiny. Perhaps you are the aliens and I am the regular person. And they all laughed at me, but it kept away suspicion. But I did think about it a great deal after that. Um, and, and I did see there was visitations in my room at night. Ah. But I thought it was my imagination up to a point. But some of them stuck with me and made me really think. So how much of support did you have from, uh, from the aliens and your activity? They gave me some ideas, actually. Mm -hmm. They saw that there was positive change in my thought process. And so they encouraged me to think 
even bigger and more positively and told me to take the trip to Europe. Uh huh. And I was questioning that, but then I thought it was brilliant. Uh huh. And so I did. So you have never been taken to any ships? No, not at that time, no. I mean, during the life? During that life, I was not taken to any ships. What was your genetics? I found out that I was tall. I had a lot of tall blue Pleiadian and Nordic blood within me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Also, there was some, uh, there is a, another tall species from Andromeda, which was a little bit of reptilian in it. Ah. And that was part of me as well. Ah, that explains many things. Yes, I did have some reptilian attitudes. Right. Uh, so, did you uh, surround yourself with uh, alien-like uh, helpers? Mm, I did not see many of those kinds of humans available, but I surrounded myself with people that do things instead of just think things. Mm -hmm. I surrounded myself with very good people that were doers instead of just sitting around thinking about things. This is a very good thing because doers can be trained to be thinkers. Right. But rarely can thinkers be trained to be doers. Right. That's for sure. Um, so what's your, how was your spirituality evolving? Obviously you weren't religious, but were no. you spiritual? I did believe in God, I guess, yes, I did. I did not confront him very often, or I did not speak to him very often, but occasionally I would say, what are you doing? So I would blame him more than I would seek him. But toward the end, I learned that it was more my fault than anybody else's, and I should not blame anyone for things that are my responsibility. So I began to say, it's all right, I forgive you. <laughs> for me to forgive God, that was good. <laughs> I fully understand. Yeah, I keep forgiving him too. Yes, it's easy to blame him, but um, it's best to forgive him later, yes. Right, um, so did you have any psychic powers? I did have one thing that I thought was a little interesting, and that was my ability to see things that were not there in the sense that I, I wanted to create a certain interest. I wanted to create certain things and I could visualize them ahead of time. And they would be almost exactly as I saw in my mind. Was it you doing or somebody was planting that in you? That is a good question. And I think they did plant some of these ideas but my psychic ability was that I could make things in my mind happen. I just wonder if you're incarnated now and who would that be? Um, am I incarnated now? No. But I will be incarnated soon. Ah. Um, are you in any relationship with Tesla? We are good friends. And he is very much like <laughs> me in this position. Yeah, I mean, there is so much craziness about both of you. 
Well, he was not very socially, his graces on society were not good and I was not good with the people around me sometimes. I was difficult to work with. He was difficult to be around. Um, so yes, we were very unlikable at times. Yeah, you were, um, you had all sorts of uh, panic attacks, physical epilepsy attacks, uh, uh, all sorts of fits and um, how do you say, jerking stuff. And uh, you weren't very much, weren't very much a normal human. No. And that also made me wonder about being an alien. I did not see anyone else doing these things. Right. I saw no one else, but they said, oh, this is called this, and this is called that, and I'm, yeah, whatever, whatever. But it's, it's not right. It's not, I don't have time for these, what they call seizures. I have no time for them. I have no time for them. I am a leader of a country. I have no time for this bullshit. So... And so it made me very angry. Afterwards, I was always very angry and I would be very cruel to people. And, um, but it wasn't their fault. It was me. I, I was feeling angry and I just took it out on them. They were close by and I pushed them out of the way. Yeah, I want to discuss your cruelty. It was just uh, from... Um, from this time, it looks we, too, too, too cruel. And even in those times, it was untraditionally cruel. Uh, there were traditional ways of hurting people, but you invented lots of new ways to hurt people. They hurt me first sometimes. I felt uh -huh. this way. And I felt God to be responsible for all these seizures. And, I, uh -huh. and uh, I, so I said, you... You're cruel to me, I'll be cruel to them. Right. If you stop being cruel to me, I will stop being cruel to them. But he never stopped. Right, yeah, I mean, whole, your whole life was, uh, um, how do you say, based on the, on the near-death fear where you're, uh, you're almost certainly assassinated and somehow you escaped that assassination with the genius yeah. mo movements in... I think it was about 15 or 16 at that time, maybe 14 even. Yes, they did not, they, I had previous knowledge that they were coming. Right. I knew that they were coming and I knew what they were going to do. I was informed about it all and so I was able to escape it. Right. But even then, I had these seizures and these Ah, terrible, <laughs> terrible things. Uh, on the positive side, I think you can be credited for uh, creation of the New Year celebration. <laughs> because in well, Europe, I certainly, they, they... I certainly needed a celebration at that time. I and mean, so... that, that was Christmas celebration, but uh, because you didn't want any... Uh, to make the religion stronger, you made it secular, and that was a, a ingenious move. It's just a few days separate, but uh, uh, and then it spilled over back to Europe. Yes, um, there was no way to be feeling Christmassy at that time. Um, giving, giving, no, no, but drinking, yes. Uh huh. So, so um, I needed some time to breathe. And so that's how that happened. Uh-huh. I just needed a day to breathe and everyone stopped asking me questions and people stopped badgering me about all these petty needs of the people. So I needed to just have a day. So now, uh, 
many people in Russia discuss that maybe it's uh, conservative ways of politics are dictated by the geographic location of the capital. So whenever the capital is in Moscow, the politics go conservative and uh, uh, retrograded, how do you call it, um, regressive, going down to down spiral. And uh, you moved it to Petersburg, and maybe that was the uh, uh, change the, um, I would say, ener energy. And, um, it did. It and did indeed. And um, people su suggest that maybe moving again to Petersburg would, uh, again, make Russia more European and more uh, progressive. Well, it, listen to why. Moscow's old and decrepit. Petersburg knew, new blood, new life, new un understanding, new ideas. So Peter, St. Petersburg wasn't called that then, but it, uh, it was new and fresh and it gave new ideas and it was being creative and being built and being established and, um, it was very exciting to be there because the people were going, ah, I see this is coming up and this building is being put up. And then there was this excitement about um, the different ways that things are being done. So yes, it was a good move. So would you recommend to move it again? Now oh, it's a good absolutely. time. Absolutely. In Moscow, old and decrepit, old thoughts, old ways, nothing new, no ideas. Just do it the same way. Don't bother me with new ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you go to somewhere else and it stirs up something different. Because uh, Putin is from Petersburg and uh... For him, it would be natural to move the capital, and there is a, you know, there is a an energetic uh, uh, justification for that. That would be great. Yeah. Well, I think his ideas about that are coming about. I think that he does see that Saint Petersburg is better in some ways. Uh huh. Moscow, however, supports him also, and he does not want to lose that support. Uh -huh. And so he knows that if he would move it at the wrong time, he would lose much support, but he must make a case for it first. Yeah, you moved it because uh, you, the, you were always uh, afraid of assassination in Moscow or revolution or uh, yeah. a putsch, yeah. So, so, uh, Putin needs to become so unpopular to, to escape into Petersburg. And he is not unpopular at this time, no. Right. He is actually more popular now than he has been. Yeah, unfortunately. Yes, he is more popular now than he has been in the past and actually acts more human. He was right. taken over for a while by reptilians when he had no expression and no active, he seemed like a dead person walking. Mm -hmm. And now he is alive again. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he is better, but he cannot undo the things that they did. So not completely. Uh, I just, we just noticed that uh, Putin and uh, Medvedev uh, have uh, amazing uh, facial resemblance to some uh, Roman senators. Yes. It is possible, yes. Uh -huh. I do not know if, if that is the case or not. I could look into, but it doesn't interest me. Right. So, what other uh -huh. questions do you have? Uh, just a little bit about your sexuality. You were pretty sadistic and not very much. Uh, it didn't look like you were pretty happy in uh, in uh, sexual life. No, it was. Well, look at me. How tall I was. 
I can't fit together with women. They're so small, and they do not know how to. They do not know how to pleasure me. No, it was too much. They they did not understand. They did and not understand who I was. No, and they didn't care much about the children either, right? No. The children, I was one of the children at one time. I see how they are treated. And they're treated like little kings and little queens. So <coughs> let them be tough. <coughs> let them go and have their fun. Right. But so when, when... why should I get involved with them when they, they don't really need me? But of course... Some would say, oh, but they need a father figure in their life. But I say, all right, then watch how I rule the country and you will see a father figure. Um, but uh, when you, you were gone, the country went into, into the dark time because you didn't build enough of the follow-up, following uh, kind of, how do you say, uh, inheritance. I didn't build enough what? You know, you didn't uh, leave the country in good hands. There was no uh, successor. Oh, no, that's true. No, I'm sorry. You cannot train a successor. They either, either have it or they do not. Right. You know what I'm saying. It's, they have either the, the great understanding of how to run a country or they do not. They, they are wimpy or they do not have all the qualifications. Right. I had the qualifications necessary. Of course, I was a bit too cruel. But I could also be fair sometimes. Right, right. No, no. There was a lot of rational things that you did. Yes, I could be you, fair. You made Russia European. I mean, that was huge. Yes, it was, it was, uh, it made, I made Russia part of the world. All right. It, that is what my thought was. I didn't make it uh, European. I just uh -huh. connected it. Right. It did not become, well, it became a little more European, yes, yes. But it, it still was a personality of... Uh, its own mother russia has its own personality mm -hmm. but it did become a little more like europe mm -hmm. well, these are all the questions i had so far it was nice meeting you i i don't know do you have anything else to to comment on um what, what are you busy these days what, what are you working on I am working on the, um, coming back to this planet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I am going to uh, be someone special eventually again, but oh, not, wow. not, the same, not the same exact personality, I don't think. I uh -huh. will be brought up in a much different way, and so my cruelty will be much less. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. No, I am hoping that cruelty will not be part of my next life. I learned many things about that when I came to this place uh -huh. and how much, how deeply people were hurt by me. That I did not know. It was not something I thought about. Right. Right. But now I do. So do you see any, anything, can you say anything specific? I mean, you were very futuristically minded. You saw the future in a great way and created it. Yes. So looking, is... at, looking now at our, at our reality, what can you say? Where do, where do you go? It, oh. <laughs> I tell you this. It, I would knock it down and rebuild it. Right. It needs to be rebuilt from the ground up in many places. Not everywhere, but most places, I would say. 
it is not the kind of place that I would want to be a ruler in because it is too diverse in some ways. You must remember, when I was a ruler, people listened to the ruler. They understood that he was in charge and they did not talk badly about the ruler unless it was very quietly in, in back, back rooms or whatever. They would not say anything against me in public or out loud. These days, in your world, people, they badmouth everybody. They talk bad about every person, no matter how good they are. That I cannot, I could not tolerate don't that. Jump, don't jump. Come on. So what's what what is um, what needs to be destroyed and what needs to be kept? The government. I was talking governmentally. Right. It is, Out of it's a mess. Also, the, the about your judiciary system, the the money. It's not good. It's collapsing, it's going to collapse anyway. So hopefully you have a better plan in place for, uh, for afterwards, because this, this plan is doomed for failure. And if you go back to a purely monetary system, it will also fail again some, at some time. So well, well, is there anything which we already have that would, should be amplified? No, there are things that should be put into place that are not there yet. And oh, my vision it. would tell me that you should start using other things as trade other than just money. Because if you put one thing in purely in charge of everything, which is the, the money, that will dictate everyone's lives. And you do not want that to happen any again. Got it. <sighs> Sounds good. Yes. So do you like barter? Barter is good. Barter is healthy. But what if the... I explain to you, barter is so healthy because you are growing or doing something to make an exchange for something that you need and you have worked for it, but yet it is not something that... Uh, you must have, but that you are, uh, you want to create, you want to make, you want to do this to, to make your livelihood. Whereas uh -huh. some people are working today, many, many people, probably 75% or 80% of the people working now do not even like their jobs. Of course. And so they're working for money, money, but they are not enjoying life and they are becoming sick over it. And they are, yes, this is not good. All right. I see this, yes. Uh, were you telepathic? Sometimes I think I was because I could tell what people were thinking about me just by looking at their face. And uh -huh. Not that I cared. Mm -hmm but I could uh, treat them more cruelly if I knew they didn't like me. Yeah, you carried them in a way by eliminating them. Yes, I did. <laughs> right. Yeah, your uh, secret police was very powerful. Uh huh. Yes. Yes, yes. It's all gone now. No, no, it's still there. I mean, I learned my lessons from that, that, that time it started before you, and it is still there, but uh, yes. in your time, you changed it so quickly, so it's, uh, it was uh, changed uh, many times. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. it, um, people will always uh, undo things that you do, even though you think that you are the best choice, <laughs> you've done the best thing. Uh -huh. They will uh -huh. still undo it. Right. The Peterborg wasn't undone, though. But I mean, the the, the capital was moved, right? Yeah. Um, Lenin moved it. I don't know. He, and for him, it was the only chance of survival. So I think it was justified. But 
the result is conservative. Yep. And that yeah. removed him again. Oh, yeah, I mean, he should have moved it back to Petersburg. Then he would survive. But uh, in Moscow, there was too much of, uh, um, yeah, the degradation that uh, he didn't survive there. Yeah, it was a mistake in a way. Yes. Uh -huh, uh huh. Well, you have to know how to survive to survive. And okay. in this particular place, he did not know how. Right. Oh, yes, I see that. I see that. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, poor guy. But you know, it is what it is because he he put himself there. Yep. Okay. Um, can you invite either uh, Ra or a um, Sun, Sun Star? Just a moment, please. Thank you. Thank you for coming. It was very interesting to to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it was good to speak to you and um, uh, drag up all the past. <laughs> right. But um, it was interesting. It made me think again about all the things that I did right and things I did wrong. Uh huh. Uh, many things wrong, many things right. Right. So have a good day. Good day.